what we're going to do is tip it at a 45 and then just stand it in. Okay, as we stand it in, you hold the nail fin back like this top. and have it sit over the top of the sealant bead. Oh, there we go. We got it. I'm ready. Okay. You tell me when. Let's do it. So, ba so what you want to do is you put the nose of your sill at the front and ease it into the bed of sealant. Got it. Okay. So 45 degrees. Yep. Which should be easy for this huge, massive door. Yes. Great. Up there. Yep. Okay, ready? Yep. Okay. It's important to note that the nail fin is flexible. It's not intended as a guide. Uh, it may need to be tweaked to make sure you get your frame plumb level and square. Right. Okay? Yep. All right. So we are good to go. It's time to square it up. Now, there's a couple of ways you can square it. I like to use a laser, as I mentioned before. Yeah. Um, some people just use a simple cross string. I always say that 90% of your time is spent on getting this frame perfect, okay? The doors are all hardware ready to go, so they go in really easy, a little bit of adjustment. This frame has to be perfect. Right. We get our wood sill install screws. Yep. Because it's a wood frame. Right. What I like to do is, is put the top and bottom jam screws in first. Okay. Okay. Get those nice, plumb and level. Yeah. And then uh, make sure the belly is taken out of it. Mm -hmm. And then basically your head and your sill fall into place. Love it. So I've got the head install screws. I like to lay my screws out. The jam install screws. Again, all labeled. And there's a couple extra, right? Because I drop them. Uh, is there a couple extra? There is, yeah. And Good. sometimes if the torque on your gun isn't set right, you can strip them. So this framing's pretty good. The, the nail fin's actually sitting nice and flush against there without being bent out. It was my side. Yeah, right. So look at that, it's perfect. Okay. So let's, let's get a screw in the top and the bottom. Okay. And you just kind of snug it up. Um, you don't want to suck it in because it'll suck the whole frame over. Right. You want to get some shims in there, but at the moment we're just trying to get that jam in place and straight so we can go over the other side and do the same. Right. So there's always a good amount of tweaking yep. between the screw and the shims that we don't have in here. That's right. Yeah, that's good. Right there? Yep. So very, that's perfect. That's perfectly straight. So let's go over the other side. Yep. This is where you want to start checking for twist. Yeah. Making sure that it's not twisting. So a good way to do that is to cross string it. Yep and those strings in the middle, you just want them to touch and it means it's perfectly square. If there's a gap between the string or it's, it's pushing against the string, it means it's, it's, it's tweaked and you need to square it up. I had no idea. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get this one in and then we'll check it again. See, this one has to come out a little bit. Okay, let's get one in the bottom. Yep, very good. Let's get one in the top. All right, perfect. So we're good? Yep. Okay. We're good. So this is, um, we want to keep checking for square all yeah. the way through. Make sure until we get all these screws tied off that it's staying in square and there's no twist. Sure. Okay? So I say, you know, really spending your time on the frame and getting it perfect is really going to, you know, mitigate any problem down the road with functionality. Moving to the interior of the system, we want to make sure that our gaps are even on both sides. You should be looking about a three eight to half inch gap, okay. depending on how close your framing is. Sure. So we've got a couple of screws in to hold it in place. The jams are nice and level. If the nail fin wasn't there, you'd get longer shims and send it through. So the shims you use on the jam mm -hmm. fixing points uh, are the wood shims. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll go ahead and put them at the fixing points if we want to snug those screws up as we put those in. Right. Okay. So do you want to snug that up? Yeah. We just snug that shim in there and tighten the screw up. Then we can just work our way down that jam. So that's gonna. So that's just just below the fixing point. Yep. So you push it all the way through the back of the uh, nail fin, and it keeps that jam nice and flat. Yep. Okay. And we can we can actually put them in here as well, Josh, as we work down. 
Okay. Good to go. Great. Okay. What we want to make sure as we're putting these shims in that we're not sucking the jam in too far yeah. or giving it a belly. Right. It's got to be nice and straight. Right. Okay. And that, that you just can hold a level up to see yep. if it's... Yep. So it's... we'll do that and we'll adjust the shims if we need to. Okay. So we want to put that here and make sure that there's no gapping. Yeah. Um, make sure it's not go getting sucked in too far or right. bellying out. So this actually looks pretty good. It's, the bubble's right in the middle. It's nice and flat. We're still nice and plumb this way. So uh, I think this jam's good to go. Right, but, but like you said, with yep. the shims and with the, the screws, yep. you, there's always adjustment periods. Exactly, so, exactly. So if it's bellying out too far, loosen the shims and suck the jam in a little bit. And it's never too late to adjust. No. Before you put your panels in. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Second side. Okay, we're in. What's next? All right, so we're going to do the sill in the head now. Okay. Sill's pretty straightforward. Because we're in a sill pan, we'll pre-drill the holes. Yep. Pump each hole with sealant. Yep. And then send the screw in. Great. Okay. And then we'll do the head. We're through. All right, so let's put some screws in, but first let's put that sealant in. Yeah then put the screw and then a surface seal over the top of the screw head. Great. Okay. Okay. So we're going to get right in there. Get a nice amount of sealing in there. And then the head beds in the sealant mm -hmm. and then we come over the top and put a surface seal. Okay. I mean, it's like we came to do some sealant and a door happened. Yeah. There's a lot, <laughs> there's there's a a lot, lot of sealant. A lot of sealing. Jam, jam, sill. Most importantly, the head. Right. All the weight's going to be hanging off that head. Yeah. We spoke about it before when we pre-drilled, but there's two channels. Yeah. Okay. So we need to make sure we get every screw in. The front channel where the wheels actually roll is going to have a screw that goes in at a slight angle. Right. Okay. And then on the interior channel, they go straight up. Okay. Okay. Now, what we recommend as we put the screws into the head is a slight eighth of an inch crown over the span of the system. So from jam to jam, an eighth of an inch crown in the middle of the head. What this does is while still allowing it to function properly, it allows for any settlement, okay? Once they put roofs on, or if that header sags at all, sure, it'll sag into flat. Which it's bound to do. It's bound to do, so that's a nice little insurance, putting that eighth of an inch crown in, and you don't have to come in when it's set. If it, if it sags beyond flat, you can have a lot of trouble. You're so, um, you know, what we recommend for installers is to find out when the stucco and the drywall is coming in and coming back to the job site, making sure that your header hasn't sagged. And if it has, you can suck it up a little bit. So now, this is why we don't put shims in the folding door heads either. Ah. We don't shim the folding door heads in the event that there is some sagging. You can come back and suck those screws up and adjust it. Nice. Yep. So one thing that I'm sure all installers, including me, would like to know is how do you get an eighth of an inch over 12 feet? All right. So it's pretty simple, actually. You can laser it, uh -huh. right, just from the corner, the bottom corner of the fascia at that join yeah. to the opposing side. Yeah. And it should just show a little eighth of an inch gap in the middle of there. Oh. Or you can put a string. You can actually string it. Pull the string tight and you should see about an eighth of an inch. Okay. This is a pretty solid extrusion, this track. So it's sitting pretty flat as it is. Yeah. So we just want to snug our screws up. Yeah. And then just adjust up through the middle and then go back and snug the other ones out. I like extrusion. Yes. I like that word. That's a good yeah. word. You can ready? You, can I use that extrusion? You can. You can. I, extrusion? If you can say it. Extrusion? <laughs> yes. I think I mentioned it before, but the reason why we put them in both channels is so we don't get any rolling of the head. Right. Okay. So as you put them in, you can actually just alternate 
from channel to channel. This particular header here is a Paralam. Yeah. Um, they're pretty tough. We may want to pre-drill all the holes first. Um, it's just going to make sending those screws in a little bit easier. Right, and if you snap okay. the head... You don't want to be snapping screws up there because then they're really hard to get out. So. Yeah, and you need that channel yeah. clear. Okay, so pre-drill. Okay. Okay. Barely did Perfect. not snug anything up. All right. All right. So let's let's send this one at just a very slight angle. You still no no less 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 yeah about there. You still want your head of your screw to clear that channel. Right. Now it's not going anywhere. So just no. rinse and repeat, right? Yep. All right. So all the, the frames screwed off. Thanks, Josh. Great. Thank you very much, mate. <laughs> very good. This, I'm too short anyway. So um, it's all screwed off. We've checked it. It's square, plumb, and level. This frame is perfect. It's got a nice little eighth of an inch crown in the head. What we need to do now to finish off the flashing, in your hardware kit, you'll find these foam corners. They go in each corner over those nail fin joins to keep them nice and sealed. You come back, you cork any gapping that you see, mm -hmm. and then you can put your top flashing in across the top, right. which overlays your nail fin at the top and creates that weatherboard effect. Right, okay? it, just, it just comes right down on top of the door. That's right. All right. Okay, so let's get up here. We're gonna put these in. Let's, like, you want me to join you on the ladder? Uh, I'll go. I'll uh, how go. about if I just watch you from here? Okay. Okay, good. And it's just for the top corners, right? Just the top corners. As you can see, it's just a, a, a small L, right? And it fits perfectly over the corner here. And seals that overlap of yep. the nail fin. Yep. Okay. So if you want to pass me the cork, if you see just any gapping, just fill in the the gapping with cork. Okay, there shouldn't be, the, but this one just has a slight little gap. You just fill in any gapping. Let's do the same to the other side, and then we can put our flashing across the top. Great. Okay. Basically what we're doing here is going over the nail fin. We need to go past the side flashing. Yep. And over the nail fin, okay? Yep. And we're gonna go from one side to the other. We're gonna finish off overlapping on the other side flashing as well. Perfect. Now, if any water gets behind the siding, hits this flashing, comes down right over your drip cap, yep. right over. Or here, just shoots right down. Exactly, so it's continually moving away from the house. Dry as a bone. All right, so are we ready to hang some doors yet? Oh. God, let's I was good. Wait, let me just smooth this out a little <laughs> you bit. You know more. you love it. Let's do it. I'm, I'm working on my core. <laughs> 